The Rangeland Analysis Platform's Rangeland Production Dataset enables you to evaluate productivity across Western rangelands on an annual and nearly continuous 16-day basis. And as you might expect, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. So in this video, we're going to pull back the curtain so that you can better understand and interpret this useful data set. So let's go. When you view the Rangeland production data set on rangelands.app, you'll see two primary data sets, one for perennial herbaceous plants and the other for annual herbaceous plants. And then for any given location, I've chosen a point here in central Nebraska, you can view those data on an annual basis and as a nearly continuous 16-day estimate. And the first thing that you should know about how this data set is produced is that we use a process-based model. This is distinctly different from the type of model used to produce the vegetation cover data set, which is an observation-based model. Here, we're explicitly modeling the process of plant growth. And for that reason, I think that this model is more intuitive than the vegetation cover model, even though it's actually more detailed. And that's because it's really just modeling photosynthesis. Remembering back to those elementary school lessons, to model plant production, we first need to know about the types of plants we're dealing with. Second, we need to know about how actively those plants are using solar energy to grow. And third, moisture and temperature are necessary for plant metabolism. Our model captures each of these variables and is an approach for modeling plant growth that has been applied for nearly 50 years. The goal of this video is to simplify this model. But just so you know, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that we're not going to explore here. Rather, we're going to look at the three primary variables I just described, vegetation cover, absorbed solar radiation, and meteorology. So how do we use each of these variables? Let's look at each of them in slightly more detail. Vegetation patterns across Western rangelands are complex. And yet that variability is fundamentally important to estimating productivity. Consider this landscape in Northern Wyoming. It's a complex landscape with multiple types of vegetation cover. Previous versions of this model relied on categorical maps of vegetation, meaning that each location could only be classified as purely grassland or shrubland, for example. Here, we use the RAP vegetation cover dataset to get estimates of the different types of vegetation cover. To try to make this a bit more concrete, Consider this landscape shown here. You couldn't strictly say that it is a grassland or a shrubland or a forest, even though all of these vegetation types overlap and intermix. Yet each of these vegetation types grows differently. The vegetation cover dataset allows us to tease out the amount of productivity from each vegetation type and to focus on the herbaceous production that's most of interest. And because the vegetation cover dataset is updated each year, the biomass estimates are also dynamic to changes occurring in vegetation communities on the ground. Of course, vegetation types and productivity patterns vary significantly across different regions. We account for variation in phenology and intensity in production by calibrating our model separately within each ecoregion shown here. Another important variable is how plants are absorbing energy from the sun. The amount of absorbed solar radiation tells us how efficiently plants are taking up the energy they need for, for photosynthesis. To understand how much radiation is absorbed, we rely on satellite data from the Landsat program. Specifically, we use a vegetation measurement known as the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, or NDVI. NDVI can tell us how active photosynthesis and plant production are at different times of the year. Then, using the vegetation cover dataset we can understand how much of that NDVI signal is coming from different types of plants. And last but not least, moisture and temperature conditions are important for regulating the plant growth as well. We use a measure of moisture stress known as vapor pressure deficit, and we also use temperature. Together, these variables help us to produce the maps of vegetation production that you can access on rangelands.app. And it's worth noting that the maps are produced in units of pounds per acre of above ground productivity, which is most useful to managers and livestock producers. It's also important to note that these are measuring new above ground growth. 
And as with the vegetation cover data set, we produce these maps for each year since the 1980s. In this case, going back to 1986. And the data are available as annual maps and as nearly continuous 16-day data as well. Thank you for joining me for this video on the RAPS Rangeland production data set. If you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below on YouTube. And if you want more information, be sure and check out the description where we have a bunch of links to different articles where you can get more information. Thanks again, and see you next time.